Hello everyone, this is update for August 9, 2024, day 898 of the war, end of the date update. Also catch up for August 8 and August uh, 7. So I'm gonna uh, start uh, with a general macroeconomic overview and then I'm just gonna uh, jump into the situation in Ukraine and now I can even say you know, situation uh, in Russia with this uh, invasion uh, of uh, Kursk region uh, by Ukrainian uh, armed forces. But first, a quick update on the macroeconomic situation and I want to point uh, to the mm, mm, more information from Germany. So uh, Germany exports and imports, as you can see, they are, um, I wouldn't say in free fall, but something close to that. Uh, so the June uh, year on year exports declined by 8.3%. And imports declined by 9.3 percent and prior months uh, in May year on year as you can see uh, there was also significant decline in exports but obviously imports are declining even faster uh, <clears throat> this is probably to some extent uh, what's uh, saving uh, German economy in terms of balance of payment because the imports are declining faster than exports but uh, the the big picture it's extremely negative situation it's all because exports are your revenue and imports are your expenses so logically you cutting your expenses because your revenue are tanking and this makes a lot of sense uh, this is you know every prudent person would try to do that uh, but the problem is that your revenues are tanking and um, as I said before, this is a result of this um, extremely hostile uh, economic policy that's being implemented in Germany. Uh, it's obviously related to the war on uh, conventional energy. Uh, <clears throat> so the, to the point that Germany is probably going to be becoming a drag on the uh, entire European Union. Uh, and in some way, it's actually interesting because this mm, self-destructive uh, this this idea of uh, replacing um, you know uh, con uh, conventional energy with uh, uh, with so-called green energy is self-defeating and and this is perfect example uh, germany is becoming almost like uh, ideal sort of uh, example of, of that of how that leads to complete failure uh, the only question where that at what point did the, the decision is going to be changed um, so that Germany does not crash into complete uh, disarray where there will be chaos on the streets similar to what we've seen in the UK uh, or things similar to that so uh, going forward Germany is becoming less and less uh, uh, economic uh, power engine of European Union and <clears throat> unfortunately reality there is not it's not that uh, anyone uh, any other country can, in European Union can replace uh, Germany uh, because uh, <clears throat> this economic potential is also relies on human capital and uh, you cannot just simply you know, plant people somewhere else in other place and things will, will, will bloom. They, that doesn't happen that way. It's um, uh, it basically the 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 the, can, the future grows really relies on significantly on human capital and and the other problem with Germany is that it's going to start losing that human capital because people will go elsewhere it's not that really many opportunities around the world uh, realistically speaking but still this is going to be extremely ne negative uh, for Germany in the long run uh, because it's not only destroying economy dest it's destroying uh, human capital uh, and that's actually, I would argue, the, the biggest uh, loss, the most uh, prolific uh, um, loss, as I stated, for, for Germany and for European Union as a whole. Uh, quickly update on the situation uh, in the U.S. job market, which is another important topic. Um, the numbers are a little bit bounced back, so things are sort of stabilized, a little bit improved. So there is no meaningful change, so I'm not even bringing the numbers because uh, it just 
there is not much to, to talk there about. The things are moving, uh, uh, they're slowly moving in a negative direction, but uh, there is still no uh, sort of free fall or significant, uh, significant negative development there. Uh, now I'm going to switch uh, to the situation uh, on the battlefield uh, in Ukraine and in Russia at this point. Uh, as I mentioned, and um, I'm going to do in a clockwise fashion. And the, the first uh, area is going to be uh, Kursk region. So Ukrainian uh, forces um, invaded Russian territory uh, uh, on uh, August 6. Uh, it was extremely successful invasion, as I mentioned before. Uh, that remained true for the August 7th and August 8th. Uh, the 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 control air the area that Ukrainian forces um, control grew significantly. Um, the reason for this success is uh, twofold. One is that on the Russian side that there there were no um, real uh, tough uh, combat experienced units there. All essentially all conscripts. So Ukrainian forces hit in a in very weak point. And uh, on top of it, uh, Russian uh, conscripts barely had any meaningful heavy equipment. So there was no real, real heavy equipment. Uh, on the other hand, uh, Ukrainian forces uh, were much better organized than they usually uh, are. Uh, and uh, they executed uh, pretty well, I would say. Uh, this is a remarkable breakthrough. Uh, in uh, Ukrainian military command relative to what we experienced so far. It's the first time when it actually uh, truly um, that, that this success can be attributed to, um, to Ukrainian forces. Because I mentioned this many times in the past, the success uh, or success in Kherson region and in, then in Kharkiv, if in, it was in 2022 for those who don't remember, Ukrainian forces liberated a significant portion of Kharkiv region, almost almost all of it, and also significant significant portion of uh, Kherson region. Those two um, uh, successes were attributed to failures. They're, they were a result of failures of uh, Russian command. They, they were not the result. They were not due to uh, actually successful actions by Ukrainian command. Uh, in this case, it's very clear that the, the actions are very uh, thoughtful. Uh, Ukrainian uh, troops are not uh, doing squeezes. They they move around strong points. They they spread. Uh, they, there are uh, reconnaissance units that that advance ahead of the main units, and they create uh, chaos on the Russian side. They help to. Um, sabotage, disrupt, and so on, um, the logistical support of Russian troops. So um, this, um, I would say, uh, reminds very closely uh, Blitzkrieg uh, tactic that was employed uh, by, uh, uh, by German troops. Uh, the, same, uh, the same idea, essentially, except at much smaller scale. So having said that, let's just look what's happening. So those... Sort of initial successes, uh, uh, you know, help Ukrainian uh, troops to control this area, and there is no clear, um, there is no clear sort of understanding of exact um, uh, territory that's being controlled. This is all approximate, uh, rough estimate, and the reason for that is because um, obviously Ukrainian headquarters doesn't. Uh, doesn't share that information because it's extremely sensitive uh, and uh, because the, this uh, operation is still ongoing. So the, the, there is very clear desire to, to, to hold the silence and silence was actually nearly perfect. Uh, there is not uh, pretty much any leaks even on the social media by Ukrainian soldiers with few exceptions. Uh, and um, so the, essentially, Ukrainian uh, command was able to really uh, uh, execute where uh, there is no leaks, there was no advance warning. If for those who remember, um, in when you when there was Ukrainian um, attack in uh, Zaporizhia region in September of 
2023, Ukrainian president came in, in May, I think, and announced that uh, that attack, so which was absolutely um, unacceptable to say very politely. Um, so in this case, uh, everything was done uh, more or less correctly. Uh, however, at this point, uh, and uh, it, it appears Ukrainian troops. Uh, stop the advances. It's not clear if uh, there is not enough resources, which is might be the case. So uh, the problem was this: if Ukrainian uh, troops stop advance, uh, Russian command will eventually bring enough resources uh, to destroy Ukrainian troops because the success in, for this strategy is really moving forward, uh, non-stop and actually disrupting rear of the uh, of the russian troops uh, and stopping uh, advance and trying to dig in will lead to a complete eventual annihilation of ukrainian troops because then uh, russian command will start using those gliding bombs and they are perfect against rigid defense and and that that will be destroyed more or less uh, guaranteed with large losses for ukrainian side and and very minimal loss, losses uh, for uh, Russian side, so uh, it's that's this ties to this to this whole idea of the uh, that it's unclear what strategic goal of this whole operation um, because while it's tactically successful at least at this point there's no question about it, uh, but long term success is is under big question and i explained why because it already appears that ukrainian um, troops don't, don't have enough resources to continue advance because they they need to control this whole territory maybe not perfectly but still uh, and you need to uh, to have strong flanks which as you can see russian um, special force brigades already started attacking uh, uh, they they attempted to uh, to capture Suja. Uh, so, and these attacks will become more and more stronger as Russian command brings more and more troops. So far, only uh, the, no, the only known troop that unit that was brought in was uh, 15th, um, and it's not clear if it's brigade or division at this point. Uh, I, I'm more, I would err more on the division uh, of the uh, former DNR uh, army. Um, so it's Donetsk, uh, it's like the next People's Republic, but uh, in uh, in in Russian or Ukrainian, it's, it's DNR. Um, so so they they only manage uh, to bring only one unit, uh, uh, and this also speaks uh, a lot that uh, so many days passed and Russian command still cannot. Um, bring anything credible to the front line, uh, which goes back to what I mentioned before, is that it, it looks like uh, Russian um, military is stretched extremely thin and everything is thrown into the Donbass region, everything that can really, uh, you know, can, can fight and uh, fighting capable, uh, it was sent into the Donbass region. <coughs> So effectively, Russian command does not have much to where to pull uh, units from, uh, and so they literally take them from front line, uh, because this 15th, uh, 15th uh, division or brigade uh, was uh, in the Donetsk uh, in, in the Donetsk area. So uh, at the same time, they don't have uh, more at this point. Uh, the Russian command tried to use aircraft to to because that's what they know they use uh, gliding bombs but they were uh, un, uh, inefficient because Ukrainian troops are moving they spread out and so it simply does not uh, does not work but going back to the bigger picture bigger strategy uh, of uh, Ukrainian command uh, I would say um, uh, unclear and probably uh, very erroneous uh, because this move does not lead to anything. Uh, even there are some uh, sort of speculations that uh, Ukrainian forces want uh, to capture nuclear power station in Kurchato, which is here. As you can see, there is a huge pond there that's 
uh, cooling uh, water for that uh, uh, nuclear power station uh, and it, I would even to make speculation even more scarier uh, this uh, nuclear power station can produce um, uh, weapon grade plutonium uh, it's it stopped producing that but uh, it's still capable so who knows what's there what they have there in stock and in inventory so technically uh, it sounds very scary i don't think that that's actually the case uh and again going that's and i'm exaggerating this just to uh, to explain that this whole nuclear uh, power plant story does not make any kind of sense uh it's even capturing that does not bring Ukraine anything, literally, uh, strategically, it's defeat effectively. Um, and the idea that uh, this will help um, uh, to pull Russian troops from Donetsk um, so far does not play out because Russian uh, command brought some this one unit uh, and apparently they probably hoping that simply the, the territory is so vast that they don't really need to bring much and it just naturally will stop Ukrainian advance. The only problem with that is there is, um, this is obviously looks uh, politically uh, horribly for the Russian president. Um, that's a huge blow to his reputation. That's only negative from that strategy but generally speaking that strategy is actually could be uh, very effective because uh, as long as russian troops very limited russian troops slow down uh, advance which already happening of ukrainian troops and you uh, then essentially this is uh, nothing it's it's road to nowhere for for ukrainian forces uh, they and and that's uh, where why I think it's in the, in the long run it may turn into a pretty negative situation for Ukrainian forces uh, because they're not going to achieve any strategic goals and eventually uh, they will have to uh, retreat with uh, losses. Uh, so this is um, so going back to this whole situation looks very nice. Uh, initially, but the biggest uh, problem that is the killer of this whole idea is there is no strategic idea behind it. Uh, in terms of units, and uh, number of units on the Ukrainian side, um, it's very clear there is a significant number of units. At, at the minimum, uh, three brigades, different sources uh, mention different numbers, different units. What is 100% clear is there is a 61st Brigade, uh, and there is potentially 116th brigade and there are a couple more brigades so uh, this is obviously not small uh, force this is not some kind of raid as it's being presented in the media this is actually a full-blown invasion uh, the way you know it would look like uh, this is a real op military operation with the, with the goal of controlling territory and capturing territory um, but as I, as I said, uh, this looks um, strategically uh, senseless, to, to put this uh, mildly. So we'll see how this is going to develop, but um, um, it doesn't make, uh, in, the, in the long run, I think it will turn into, into a problem for Ukrainian side. Uh, now let's move to the situation around Kharkiv. Here, situation the the, the front line is more or less in complete standstill. Uh, no major uh, moves here by either side, and this is goes back to what I mentioned before that um, Russian side clearly does not have enough resources to continue their push. So, in in some ways, this whole advance is kind of like a mirror of ukrainian advance it's completely senseless doesn't achieve anything and and just spreading resources um and uh, something similar is going on on the ukrainian side uh, now let's move to the situation on the north slovain section of the front line uh, things here are more or less the same some russian pressure uh, uh, towards Kupiansk uh, and uh, in the southern sector at the same time uh, I would also want to mention that uh, it's very clear that uh, strengths of uh, an intensity 
of Russian uh, attacks subsided uh, on the rest of the front line. So this apparent, this Ukrainian um, um, attack on Kursk region is clearly created, um, I would say, shock uh, in Russian command and in Russian political uh, political top uh, in Russian president that uh, in some ways they they lost and don't know how to respond to the situation uh, and uh, but eventually they will develop some kind of strategy uh, now let's look at the situation on the north and bus uh, front line uh, in the north uh, Russian troops continuing their pressure without much success uh, no, uh, no, no new uh, major advances here. Uh, now let's look at the situation uh, west of Bakhmut around CVR. Uh, the same situation, Russian advance stalled. Uh, I would say that it's simply too expensive um, the way it's being done. It's like done in the worst way by Russian uh, command here in this area by extremely primitive. Uh, uh, frontal squeeze that's uh, creating uh, huge um, losses that cannot be easily um, uh, replaced. Now let's look at the situation on the central Donbass front line. Uh, things here are uh, definitely uh, continuing to um, to move in very negative direction uh, for Ukraine. Uh, so uh, Russian uh, Russian uh, troops. Uh, captured Lysychny, which I mentioned um, uh, last time, that was not confirmed. Now it's uh, from you know it's confirmed. Uh, also, they captured uh, Sergeyevka. They uh, controlled significant portion of Jelan and then advanced uh, here tor towards Komishivka. So as you can see, and they started attack at a town called Hrodivka. It's a small town, but yeah, at the same time, it's already uh, a little bit uh, bigger uh, place. So, as you can see, the situation uh, is not stable, has not stabilized uh, for Ukrainian forces and continues uh, to move in very negative uh, direction here with, uh, I would say, no hope inside so far. Uh, and this is uh, prior, uh, prior, um, not actually prior, from August 3rd. So, as you can see, uh, Russian uh, troops do, you know, um, make visible advances here and noticeable and over relatively short period of time as you can see um, this is just the big picture of the, this whole situation uh, also uh, russian troops so far stalled in krasnohorivka uh, ukrainian uh, ukrainian forces still control tiny piece of north north um, northwestern corner of krasnohorivka uh, but for all intents and purposes, that town uh, is uh, lost uh, for Ukrainian forces. Um, oh, and uh, I forgot to mention that New York, uh, which is um, uh, not, you know, the, the same name, name actually after New York uh, in the U.S. Uh, 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 so that town is close to be lost uh, by Ukrainian forces. So that's uh, another, another major sort of uh, negative development here, although uh, this does not have as negative strategic consequences as move advances uh, here uh, in this area of um, you know, and, uh, um salient. Now let's move to the Parisia front line and uh, things here are fairly quiet. It's be it has become a strategic dead end for both sides. Some very small size local uh, probing attacks by Russian troops, but really nothing uh, major here. And then uh, let's finish with uh, the front line along the Pro River. Uh, things here also very quiet. It's completely uh, stand, see, stand still. And as I mentioned before, uh, most likely that uh, many of these troops are being pulled by both sides. Basically, the both sides are probably very thin here in this area. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Bye bye.